I can't sleep tonight Everybody's saying everything is alright Still I can't close my eyes I've seen a tunnel at the end of all of these lights Sunny days Where have you gone? I get the strangest Why does it always rain on me? Is it because I lied when I was 17? Why does it always rain on me? Even when the sun is shining, I can't avoid the lightning. Oh, where did the blue skies go? Oh, and why is it raining so? So. Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Why Does It Always Rain On Me by Travis. Fantastic song. Uh, Fran Healy is a really, you know, one of the great songwriters of our generation and uh, this is one of his finest tunes. Uh, we need the capo on the second fret. It's kind of a mixture of open chords and bar chords. We've got a bit of a B minor bar chord happening at that point, so if you're not familiar with your bar chords, you might find this one a little tricky. Uh, the uh, let's talk about the strumming first, actually. So the, the strumming on the record is mostly like one, two, and three, four, and down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. But I tend to kind of feel this one as being a bit more one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. You know, it's that this kind of strumming, so long as you're keeping your hand moving and you kind of basically got a one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and that either of those patterns is going to work fine. So, you know, feel it out for yourself as to which one you feel like is the right one for you, you know. Uh, the chords, D, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, G, G with an F sharp bass, E minor seven. It's the little intro sequence. Now D is just regular. A minor is regular. Now when it comes to a G on these kind of acoustic tunes, I generally leave off the first finger, right? So to be third fret relative to the capo I'm talking now. Third fret muted with the underneath of your second finger. Open, open, third, third for the G chord. Now you can put your first finger down, but for me that note just kind of muddies up the bottom end of the chord a bit, you know. So again, it's up to you whether you want or that. That's your G5, that's your full G. Really, you know, it's a personal tasting. Uh, to get to a G with an F sharp bass, we're going to move our first finger over to the second fret of the thicker string, and the underneath of your first finger will mute the fifth string for sure. Right? So F sharp, mute, open, open, three, three. We're leaving the third and fourth fingers down there from our G chord. And to get to our E minor seven, we move our first finger to the second fret of the fifth string. We put our second finger on uh, the second fret of the fourth string. So first and second fingers are playing like a regular E minor. But again, we're leaving our third and fourth fingers down on the thinnest two strings. And we end up with our E minor seven. Using those chords quite a bit through this tune. So the intro, D, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, G, G with an F sharp bass to the E minor. We add in the strumming. A minor. G with an F sharp bass to the E minor. Into the verse. B. I can't sleep at night for two bars. B minor. Right? So if you're not familiar with B minor bar chord, nothing on the thicker string. Make sure the thicker string is muted by the tip of your first finger. Second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, third fret. Second fret. Okay, so let's run through now the whole verse chord sequence. So we got starting off with two bars of D. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then to B minor. Two, three, four. One, two, three. And back to D. I'm simplifying the strumming now just to keep it simple while we learn the chords. And back to B minor. Two, now we're going to a G chord. 
two, three, two, and A, two, three, four, back to G, and then back to A. And now we got the little walk down like we had in the intro. G, G with an F sharp bass, E minor, the whole bar, to A sus four, to A. So all of those chords I'm hoping you're familiar with, maybe the A sus four, which is uh, nothing on the thicker string, open, second, second, third, open, going to an A. Now there are lots of different fingerings for the A sus four depending on what the A chord is you're going to. So uh, you might want to use your first, second and fourth fingers and then move your, lift off your fourth finger and put your third finger down the second fret of the second string and that would be kind of the traditional way to play an A chord. If you're playing A the way that I teach it in the beginner's course with the first finger on the third string, second finger on the fourth string and third finger on the second string, to get the sus4 you would just hold that chord down and put your little finger down on the third fret of the uh, second string. There. It really doesn't matter, you know, it's whatever one feels comfortable for you. I use all of the different ways of fingering those kind of chords, you know, it's not like there's one that should be set in stone. The one I teach as part of the beginner's course is the one that I think is the best for beginners to play. But as you kind of graduate out of that, then you, you, know, you need to be exploring some of these other chord groups as well, depending on which one's easiest in any particular song. So uh, let's put that through now with a little bit of the rhythm as well. Two, three, four, D. I can't sleep tonight. E minor. Everybody's saying everything is alright. D. Still I can't close my eyes. B minor. I'm seeing a tunnel at the end of all of these G chords. Sunny A. G. Where have you A, I, G, the F sharp bass to E minor 7, U, B, and A sus 4 to A. That's your verses, right? Really lovely little chord sequence that. One thing that you might like to experiment with if you're playing by yourself is playing one chord and letting it kind of ring out a little bit. Like it's, a, it's a little bit more like the record, and again, it's good for the dynamics. Maybe not for the first verse, maybe for the second verse, but just to do one strum to have like... I can't stand myself I'm being held up by invisible man That kind of thing, just strumming a chord and letting it kind of ring out sounds real nice. So, into the chorus. Chord sequence is going D, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, G with an F sharp bass to E minor 7. D to A major, this is A major note. G, G with an F sharp bass to E minor 7. Okay, let's put that with the rhythm on there as well. Two, three, four. D, was it always A or me? G, is it because F sharp bass to E minor when I was 17? D, was it always A on me? G, even when the G when the sharp bass is shining, E minor seven can't avoid the lightning. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a mouthful. Nice simple chord sequence there for the chorus. You know, with this kind of tune, you know, making sure that you got your rhythm real nice and solid is the thing that it's going to, you know, make the song sit really good. Again, think a little bit about dynamics as well, because so even if you're strumming through the verses, when it comes to the chorus, you want to give it a little bit more energy just to pick it up a bit, to make the songs, especially when you're playing by yourself, a kind of an acoustic version. You really want to make sure that you differentiate between the verses and the choruses with your strumming pattern, if it's slightly similar. You do that with dynamics. Quieten it down a little bit for the verses, bring it up for the choruses. The other section that we need to check out is the bridge, which is the... So we're starting off this with a B minor to a D, back to B minor, and then to D, and we've got one other little chord sequence, C, C with a B bass, A minor, A minor 7 with a G bass, then to the A sus 4, to the A, so it's just the end there that's a little bit uh, unusual. Well, it's actually not that unusual, it's quite a common chord sequence, but it's different for this song. So, B minor for a whole bar, D for a whole bar, B minor for a whole bar, D 
for a whole bar. Now we've got this little rundown. It's really kind of a bass note rundown. We're going C, B, A, G, and then to our A sus4. So we're starting the C chord, regular old C chord. Now to get to C with a B bass, we lift off our second and third fingers and put our second finger back down in the second fret of the fifth string. That finger should also mute the uh, fourth string, so you end up with nothing on the thicker string. Second fret, mute, open, first, open. Bit of a weird sounding chord like this on its own, but it's nice in the... That little sequence there. So C, C with a B bass, then to A minor. Now A minor, just a regular one, I think just when I was playing that little run down there, I played A minor 7 and left off my third finger, naughty me. Uh, I think it's a regular A minor in this instance. And then we lift off the third finger from the A minor chord and pop it down on the third fret of the thicker string. And we end up with an A minor with a G bass. You could also play A minor like that and reach over with your little finger to get that G bass if you like. But I think that one sounds kind of nicer to my ear as using a third finger on the bass note there. Uh, and then we've got to the A sus4 for the A. Same as before, a few different fingering options up to you to choose which one. Let me just try that one more time now. Two, three, four, B minor. Where did the D skies go? B minor. Why is it D so C? With a B bass, A minor. With a G bass, A sus4. A, and then we're back into the first. Okay, then, so that's a little bridge part. So there you have all of the chord progressions for Why Does It Always Rain On Me? It's a fantastic song to play this one. One thing that's really cool fun that you might want to check out is doing a, an acoustic guitar and electric guitar thing together. Uh, you know, there's quite a lot of that on the actual re record as well if you're looking for some inspiring uh, ideas. But if you've got a jam buddy that, you know, that you're playing with, one guitar playing the acoustic guitar, one guy playing the electric guitar, just playing the same chords, strumming them once and them, letting them ring out, or maybe arpeggiating, you know, picking a few notes out of the chord and letting them kind of ring together, you know. It's a lovely effect, the acoustic and electric guitar together. Um, if you're not familiar with the album this is off, which is called The Man Who, go and get it right away. It's a fantastic album. Uh, Fran Healy's a great songwriter, and uh, not that he's still doing great stuff as well, but uh, this record particularly is just really you know, fantastic songwriting going on and these great arrangements and a really, good, you know, deservedly a massive hit record. Um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy playing it. Uh, I'll see you for plenty more songs and lessons and stuff real soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.